Nearly one quarter of them will die almost immediately. About 20 minutes after ejaculation, the semen becomes fluid again. The surviving sperm become vigorously active, swimming rapidly against the downward currents in the woman's body. There is great urgency, for the sperm will remain viable, able to fertilize for only 28 to 48 hours. This is the sound made by thousands of active sperm. great activity has but one goal, to find and fertilize the egg. There are so many of them that success might seem assured, but the barriers too are numerous. The high percentage of defective sperm has already lowered the odds. the vagina's hostile acid environment. And the woman's own defense system attacks the sperm. They are unwelcome cells from another organism and they are potential enemies. Her defense cells aggressively protect her from the invaders by destroying them. The sperm are programmed to seek the egg, but some of them try to fertilize the first round object they find. In this case, an ordinary body cell. Still, in spite of the obstacles, hundreds of thousands of sperm make their way up through the vagina to the cervix, the mouth of the uterus, which will lead to the fallopian tubes and the egg. secretes strands of a special fluid protein called mucin. During ovulation, it is very liquid and easy for the sperm to swim in. The strands of mucin provide tiny channels less than one one hundredth of a millimeter wide, directing the sperm closer to their objective. them never find the strands of mucin, and they will die in the vagina. Those that survive will swim up the mucin channels toward the uterus. They swim in dense bunches. The outer ones may protect the inner ones from the woman's acidity and defense systems. inside the cervix, the sperm continue on their journey. Some remain here, perhaps to provide a backup for those that continue on. The rest proceed up through the cavity of the uterus, in search of the egg. noticeably reduced. Here from inside the uterus, 
we see the openings to the two fallopian tubes. The sperm swim toward them. One leads to the waiting egg. The other to an empty tube. Only half of the few remaining sperm will swim up the tube which holds the egg. of tiny cilia, the same cilia which helped draw the egg from the ovary toward the uterus at ovulation. These cilia sway constantly, creating a gentle downward current that the sperm must swim against. Some sperm gets stuck in among the cells lining the walls of the tomb. Others lose their sense of direction. During this part of the sperm's journey, the layer of enzyme inhibitors at the tips of their heads is slowly being worn away. The sperm are fully capacitated and able to fertilize the egg if they ever encounter it. Of the 200 million sperm that begin this long journey, only about 50 ever reach the egg. is surrounded by two layers of the nutritive cells which have nourished it on its journey in the fallopian tube. The sperm immediately release their digestive enzymes to break through these protective nutritive layers in order to reach the egg itself. At best, only one will eventually enter and fertilize the egg. joint force of their exertions starts the egg rolling around like a mysterious celestial body. dissolving their way through the egg's outer layers. The first sperm to reach the egg's membrane is immediately drawn inside. This is the tail of the penetrating sperm seen from the surface of the egg at enormous magnification. is a picture from inside the egg itself. It has been fertilized now for only a fraction of a second. Here is the penetrating sperm with a circle around it from a wider perspective. Only this single sperm will be allowed inside the egg. A rapid biochemical change 